So this is yesterday's blank I made with um, this plastic uh, container I got from Dollar Tree. It is 3.31 cups, and I don't know exact measurements. It's like four down here and like three and a half here by five or something long. So my idea of getting this particular container was so I can make um, shaving brush molds and I could do several of them. And then I got to thinking, well, normally whenever I make shaving brushes, I try to make a matching, sorry, my dog wants to go inside, so he's letting me know about it. Um, I tried to make a matching shaving bowl um, to go with it, so that way you can have your soap. Now this isn't quite tall enough for a bowl, but if I put a piece of wood on the top and the rim and then use that same piece of wood for a lid, then that could work. So that's what I'm going to try out today and see how this mold will work out. Excuse me while I go let my dog in. This side will be for the bowl. This side will be for the brush. There will be plenty left on there, which is good because in case, you know, something goes wrong, you'll have extra to fidget with. Um, but first, I'm going to shave this ridge off from the mold. You can see it. I'm going to shave that off. <laughs> I may have cut that too small. <laughs> well, once it's done, it's done. I guess we will um, find out. Look how cool that looks. That's mm -hmm. nifty. I mean, if nothing else, I can just cut another piece. The bottom needs to be leveled out. It's one to rock. Oh, my light. Mm -hmm. I guess this is what it looks like to. Live and learn, right? Yeah, it's not going to be big enough. We'll get there. We'll get there. That might be a pretty cool knife scale. Everybody. Due to technical difficulties and my luck with camera equipment, um, I, I thought I had recorded the actual casting of this um, resin piece, but it looks as though I didn't. Um, this has in it, you know, of course, my mica powders that I mixed together did gold, bronze, and some black, and a little bit of pearl white, and I casted those um, shavings you get from your Forstner bit when you're hollowing out things. Um, I just had some really perfect pieces that stuck well together and they were just really pretty so I decided I was going to cast those and use those for this project. Sorry I don't have actual casting um, recorded to show you. So here I'm using my 5 8 uh, bowl gouge to you know cut away a lot of material and try to get it shaped down. I noticed in some areas it was, you know, easier to try to cut normal or do a shear cut than others, and because some of that resin just wants to chip, and you'll feel it. You definitely feel it when it's about to start doing that, and when it's going to actually cut smooth. So, still getting the feel for it and getting that down, um, which is still obviously fun, and, and I love a challenge. So, um, also using my negative rake. Uh, this is a one inch scraper and my half inch scraper to just you know remove a lot more material faster it seemed like that especially where those chippy areas were that negative rake just cuts right through it and acts like it you know <laughs> it doesn't bother it a bit um, I take a paddle bit and I measure it with the size of my knot my brush to see how wide it is and I just go um, a little deeper than what the knot would uh, where the glue on the knot is for the shaving brush, I go a little deeper 
so that way that was completely covered when I glue it in. Then I tap uh, a screw to match my, um, it's an M2 uh, tapered, I don't remember what it's called honestly. Um, it's for my Ruth Niles off-center medallion jig and it works perfect for these brushes. It fits right into that hole and that size and I just tap a hole which later on gets filled um, obviously with glue so um, keep in mind unless you have another way to turn it around on your check that tap hole will be visible so if you did it like a clear um, you know resin cast you might want to consider that when you know designing or making it so I look online and get ideas for like shapes for the handles I like the traditional style ones, they're really cool. I'll try to pull up some old style pictures. And um, I also like to try some newer styles too. Um, you can get pretty fandangled and fancy and, and as far as your shapes and everything goes. So it's, um, I just keep grabbing hold of it and seeing the feel, seeing the grip. Um, you know, I try to think that this is going to be a man using this. So, you know, their hands are a little bit bigger, I guess. So you want to make sure that that's something that you know they feel they can get a good hold on to. I actually took this inside and had my husband hold on to it and see how it felt before I uh, finished shaping it up, you know, and parting it off. I used my Axe Abrasive Paste work really well for this piece to finish off after I wet sanded it. Um, going through all the grits with my micro mesh. In the bottom here, I'm making it flat and slightly concaved in the very center because I wanted the brush to be able to be sat on the counter without tipping over. Um, and I just, you know, try to think of, you know, the use of the things and, and um, I wouldn't have much patience for a brush that just constantly wanted to tip over. So that's how I had in mind in designing mine. And I do see some with more rounder bottoms and, and things. And I guess if you're going to hang it on something that would work. So keep that in mind too. Um, when doing your brush. It's just some trying to point out some things to help keep in mind. Going through all the micro mesh grits from 320 to 3500. Then I go back through the process of using the Axe Abrasive Paste and then the Restoring Polish. It really got a nice shine and being that this was all resin there was no, well, a little bit of wood in it but not enough to make a difference. 99% resin. Um, I didn't worry about putting any kind of like CA glue or sealant on it. Um, that's something you might want to consider when doing a wood brush. I usually do like a few five or six coats of CA glue. I'm using two part epoxy to glue in the root ball and I tape the root ball together so that way it protects it from the glue and um, helps me get a hold of it better without it getting all nasty and dirty. So this is going to be the bowl for the um, shaving brush I just made. It's a little, not as dark as the shaving brush, but it still matches. I put a piece of walnut in there um, so I'd have something to mount to, and I may utilize this as a lid. Um, I did mount it with a wormwood screw so there's a hole, but my plan is I have this scrap piece left over from the brush. My plan is, is to make a circle, like a little slightly dome-shaped piece, to insert into the lid, which will cover up the fact that I had to drill a hole in it and also make the lid and the, um, sorry, the bowl itself will uh, look really nice together and, and kind of blend. So we'll see. I kind of just go until I hit a problem solving spot and, and then problem solve as I go. So that's my plan thus far. I'm going And problem solving is exactly what I did with this piece. I mean, what is a good wood turn without having to problem solve through it? So my problem solve issue was I did not um, leave enough of that walnut wood sticking out. It just wasn't tall enough to make a lid and a rim or make the bowl itself tall enough to house the soap puck. They're little soap pucks that you can get on Amazon or Walmart or wherever else. They're really um, popular right now for shaving. And so depending on the size 
I usually go by like the largest size of a puck. So um, I can't remember the exact measurements of the puck, but the I'll put it in the description because I'll be able to measure it and give you those measurements, at least for the puck that um, I buy for my husband. Um, and that are kind of more, I guess, easier to find. Like Walmart has them, so, you know, in case the person you're gifting this to isn't particular on their uh, shaving pucks, they don't have a company they already use, then at least you know the ones at Walmart it will fit or suit. Um, like I said, I just did not make it tall enough. Um, and that's okay, because, you know, that's what we got lots of rope, scrap wood laying around. We can throw it in there. So I had an extra a walnut and you'll later on see me making a whole separate lid. Um, but this whole piece is going to be the actual bottom and I'm using the walnut that's on there as a rim. Um, I go through the same process I did my shaving brush and um, wet sand it going through all the grits 320 to 3500 using Axe Abrasive Paste and the Restoring Polish and then I do a shellac uh, coat on it. So I measure the shaving puck and go from the bottom of the bowl so at least I know that's where that puck is going to be sitting um, and then go from there as far as how wide the bowl has to be so I can have an idea of, of how much I can actually shape the piece. Um, just make a little mark on there so I know and then from there it's just you know however you want to you want to shape it. I wanted this one to have a little bit of foot to kind of mimic the shape that's going on with the brush so they wouldn't look you know like two totally different pieces. I did cast these um, at two different times and my colors weren't exactly the same because I messed up cutting you see in the beginning of the video cutting my block that I intended to make all one piece I end up messing that up but it was the first time I you know officially cut cut on my bandsaw and and I should have just you know set up something to cut it a little straighter so that's totally my fault live and learn um, so that's kind of what I was going for there and I did my camera did shut off through some of the video of shaping the lid so it might skip to like me just polishing um, and sometimes this dumb camera does that I it just shuts off randomly and of course you're turning away and you got all this noise and you don't really realize it so I apologize. I made a line in the top because that's where I was going to, or I'm sorry, where I did cut the lid and then realized it was too, too short. It wasn't going to be tall enough. So um, when my camera decided to shut off and I didn't realize that I had um, went ahead and parted that where that line was and I had to turn around and glue it back on with epoxy. So how frustrating, you know, sometimes you just get ahead of yourself and and you know not pay attention well, at least I do I get ahead of myself and not pay attention and but hey you know it helps you build your problem-solving skills so that's the reason why I'm reshaping it right now I turned it around and I had to glue that piece back on and then cut another piece of walnut for the lid um, it ended up turning out okay and you know just added a few extra steps in time but I was glad I put that in it because otherwise the the puck wouldn't have enough room for them to, you know, for the, whoever's going to have it to, you know, juice around their <laughs> soap. Um, so here I'm hollowing it out with my bowl gouge, and then I'm just going to move over to my Forstner bit so I can get a good depth and how far I want to go. And um, this one was pretty, pretty easy to hollow out. Didn't give me any issues. Um, and those Forstner bit shavings there is what I use to actually cast, not the resin ones, but wood. Um, this didn't give me too much of a fit. It was fairly simple 
to hollow out. It was easier to hollow out than actually cut away in the first place. So um, I make a indent in the around the rim so that way the lid will have something to sit into. Um, I don't think I had made the lid at this point. My video ended up getting all kind of messed up and and whatever. So I'm sorry. This was a horrible video week for me. <laughs> but I'm going to try to do the best I can to explain what I'm doing at least. So I hollow it out, make a little lip in the rim so that way the, the lid has something to seat into. And um, I finish, polish it off, and then that's when I switch over to focusing on my lid. The video of me sanding this bowl got totally lost, and so whatever. In the bottom, I'm making little grooves, so that way the soap, once it gets in there, it has something to like suction to, and it helps keep the soap from just flopping around in there while you're trying to get it to lather. Um, here I'm just using the Axe Abrasive Paste to smooth it out, and the Restoring Polish, and then I do a shellac coat on this as well. Sorry, I wet sanded it first with the micro mesh going from 320 to 3500. Then Axe Abrasive Paste, then the Restoring Polish, and then the Shellac. Sorry, I'm a hot mess. So more footage of this video ended up getting not recorded. The lid, I just grabbed another piece of walnut. I jammed it between my chuck and the tailstock and rounded it out and um, made a tenon, turned it around, and then here is where the camera, I've decided, oh, I better check my camera. And um, so I'm shaping, I shaped, well, I already did shape, the, this is going to be the inside of the lid that goes into the bottom. I have uh, shaped it and sanded it and a lot of bits and pieces of this finishing process did not get recorded either I think my camera is just starting to poop out on me I don't know um, after I sanded it down I put a coat of lacquer and lacquer thinner kind of my sanding sealer um, my version of it I guess uh, then I put about three coats and all I had on hand was the uh, medium CA glue. Um, I put about three coats of it on there just as like a sealer. I was going to do resin but I just this project was taking me so long as it was and a lot longer than I thought because of the issues I was coming across and uh, so I didn't want to wait all night um, for um, epoxy to dry on there. So I just used the CA glue which I've done before on the brushes and bowls. It works really well and my husband's is still holding up to this day and it's you know used every other day so that's what I did and then I just used the axe abrasive paste to knock all that back you know to get it nice and smooth and then I used their restoring polish and then I used uh, shellac just to give it a nice shine To make sure the lid fits on the really good before I turn it back around and start working on the top side of it. I made the indent in here so that way I can just expand in it and turn it around. And it's not much of a lip. Um, I used paper towel just to kind of help cushion uh, the creases that it would make. That nub, that little piece that you see is the piece that I said I was going to use out of my scrap and the camera didn't record me making that either but um, I just cut a piece off the scrap and then I'm measuring the circle for it to go into I thought it wasn't gonna have enough to where there would still be wood behind it when I glued it in but um, it was my lid 
was just too thin. And that was okay. I don't want a big bulky lid because the lid's, you know, just there to protect the soap. You don't want it to be so heavy and bulky. Um, so I went ahead and made my groove for it. And my, my groove for it, my that hole, I ended up making a slightly too big. So I had to pull it off the lathe to glue it on. Um, I just set it down on my on a scrap board that I had and, and let it sit in there to dry um, before put, remounting it. And then here I'm just smoothing it out to make it flush with the lid in the shape, the final shape that I want it to be. And went through the same sanding process with the um, micro mesh and then the axe abrasive paste. And uh, no, I'm sorry, the micro mesh. Then I did sanding sealer, and then I put CA glue just on the wood parts. I didn't worry much about the resin, and then the axe, abrasive paste, and the restoring polish and shellac. I uh, didn't have images of everything all together because the shaving brush was already in the house, so I'll put up pictures of that. Sorry, I didn't have video of all that uh, together. Like I said, I apologize. This was a hot mess express for the... Uh, videoing process for this project but at least you got to see some of it um it definitely took a lot longer to uh to make this um, than normal but you know you just roll with the punches and take as an experience and know what not to do next time at least